A live overhead look now at investigators taking a look at that deadly commuter train accident just north of New York City. NTSB investigators now on the scene and combing over every inch, checking the signaling system and trying to figure out how the train was operating. And all of this could take up to a year to determine the exact cause. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Franzen in New York. This story developing now. And we want to go right to ABC's Elizabeth Herr, who is on the ground and joining us from the crash scene in Valhalla, New York. Elizabeth, give us the latest. Good afternoon to you. Yeah, just as you mentioned, the investigators from the NTSB, they arrived here just about an hour ago. Right now, they are on the train getting the first look at the wreckage. The scene, so horrific. Officials say most of the bodies were burned beyond recognition. Tragedy on the tracks. This is probably the worst tragedy I've ever responded to. On one of the busiest rail lines in the country. Screaming, yelling, it was just total panic. The Metro North commuter train in New York striking a Jeep stuck on the tracks. The impact sparking a fire so intense, part of the train melted. Uh, people were yelling for a fire extinguisher to call 911. A lot of yelling, a lot of screaming. The chaos from the collision just north of New York City caught on this cell phone camera. Authorities saying the crash killed at least five passengers on the train and the driver. Rick Hope was in the vehicle just behind the Jeep. The gate came down and hit the back of the car in front of me. She was trying to make it to the other side. Federal investigators are now on the ground trying to determine what went wrong. Our first order of business is what we've already done. That is to take command of the accident scene. The rail line already under scrutiny following a string of crashes most recently in 2013 when four commuters were killed after the conductor fell asleep. At this point, all indications from the MTA at least is that it was not a problem with uh, the tracks or anything. It was uh, unfortunately a human error. And once again, that investigation now officially underway. And what we are told is happening right now, investigators on the train collecting and documenting evidence. Michelle, back to you. And Elizabeth, as we look overhead here, we can see many investigators on the ground there. And we know that they're going to be up against weather. Uh, we heard earlier that they may have located those recorded box on a train. What else are they looking for today? Absolutely. Officials have confirmed that they have located and secured that recording device from the train. They say what they're also going to be looking for are recording devices from in and around this vicinity because they want to answer, as you can imagine, how fast was this train traveling? Also, were the brakes applied and did the conductor sound the horn as it was approaching the crossing? Officials say they also also want to uh, begin the work of interviewing the eyewitnesses as well as the conductor, but they understand right now they are so emotional. Perhaps in a day or two, that portion of the investigation can get underway. And Elizabeth, we've got an overhead view and we see behind you as well the task that we hear that they may be moving those train cars as early as today. What have you heard? I apologize. I, I, because of the helicopter above, I heard parts of that question. I believe you said they're going to begin the work of removing the car. Exactly. As early as today? Uh, I believe that was the plan, and they certainly hope to uh, first secure the scene, which they have. We were actually able to get much closer to the scene earlier to get some video and also where the press conference was held. But as you can see, uh, we've been pushed back further and further away from the scene. This because they are there. They are securing the scene. They want to first remove the car as well as uh, the vehicle, the Jeep, the vehicle that was involved, as well as the first car that you see behind me here that collided with the SUV. And Elizabeth, if you can still hear me, you said you got a closer look today. Is it just amazing that anyone was able to escape this wreckage? It truly is remarkable. When you first got to the scene, you get this eerie feeling because you got a very close look at basically the charred remains of what's left of this train. And also, perhaps the first responders put it best, the paramedics who got here on the scene last night, they said, looking at that huge ball of fire, they expected a tragedy, a much worse, victims, uh, many more. However, they are just grateful that 
many of the people were able to escape, but absolutely their hearts go out to the victims who were not able to go home. And Elizabeth, we know one of the areas that they will be searching also for data is that uh, the crossing gate that came down. What are we learning about that? And give us an idea exactly what we've heard so far about this vehicle crossing the tracks. Uh, the the vehicle, they want to know why and how that Jeep got stuck where it was. Uh, as far as the signal and the recording devices uh, that's um, installed at the crossing gate, uh, they tell us and they stress, remember, they just got here to the scene. They don't have much information. What they can share with us is their plan. And that plan, as you mentioned, is trying to uh, get that recording device, examine it, obviously, as thoroughly as they can to see what, if anything, was captured that can answer just exactly what happened. And are we learning any more about the driver who was killed in this accident? Unfortunately, at this time, authorities have not identified the victim. All we know and all we have heard is the witness account from the driver who was just behind that Jeep. According to that eyewitness, she basically came to a stop at the crossing because that crossing gate fell on top of the car. He, she stepped out of the car to look at what happened. She, she tried to remove that gate and then got back in the car and unfortunately, and for some reason, she moved forward. And that's exactly when the impact and the collision occurred. Uh, just a horrific scene. And, and the, uh, the eyewitness, as you can imagine, uh, was horrified. And is there any extra sort of precautions that they are taking? We've heard from many of the rescue crews saying that this is the, the most horrific thing that they have had to witness and, and be on scene with rescuing some of those people. We see many of those workers on the ground now overhead. Have you spoken to anyone else? Uh, we have not had a chance to speak to any of the rescuers as of yet. NTSB officials say they hope to hold a briefing later this afternoon. Now, after having seen uh, some of the scene and the wreckage, hopefully we will learn more then. But at this time, we have not had a chance to talk to them. As far as precautions go, uh, absolutely, they are treating it is a, a, a huge crime scene. They are treating it as such, and they are working as meticulously as they can to make sure that they get all of the answers. And this is typically the case with the NTSB. They get on site, they have a, a priority list, and they know exactly what steps to take. And in that order, and they will not be deterred or rushed, but they are, uh, they will have the task, they say, of moving these train uh, cars as early as today. And what are they going to do with those cars, Elizabeth? Oh, as you can imagine, and I can only imagine what they will be doing is examining it piece by piece uh, to see what uh, remains and of that wreckage, what answers they can get from it. Uh, now, as far as the, the plan of attack here is concerned, officials estimate they could be here on the scene for about the next five to seven days. Uh, that will be the on-scene phase of the investigation, but they say this is obviously a very involved investigation that could take up to a year to complete. And we understand that rail service in this stretch is closed down. How is Metro North, that commuter rail company, dealing with this? Uh, they absolutely um, are working with not only the investigators to make sure that the scene is secure. And yes, therefore, uh, some of the services are shut down in this area. How they are ac accommodating the commuters, we are told, shuttle buses have been uh, brought in to get those commuters to where they need to go to. This, uh, if you did not know the Metro North, it is the second busiest rail line in the country, only after the Long Island Railroad. We're told uh, it serves about 280,000 commuters every day in New York and Connecticut. So obviously the uh, folks know that this could inconvenience so many folks, but absolutely they have a contingency plan to accommodate everyone. And overall, usually having a good record and as well, New York's governor saying at the moment it doesn't appear to be anything other than an accident, but the NTSB, of course, still doing their investigation. ABC's Elizabeth Herr reporting live from Westchester County in New York. Thank you. And of course, you can keep up with this story in real time by downloading the ABC News app and starring this story for exclusive updates on the go.
For now, I'm Michelle Franzen in New York.